What's up, people? Welcome to week four. Okay. I hope you've had uh, a, a nice week. Hope you had a nice weekend. Okay. Oh, it's September. I, I'm fantastic. How exciting is that? It just, it just, I just, it, 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 it just registered. It's September. Oh, fantastic. The beginning of the er months. The er months are the best. As I've already gone over, I'm not going to rehash what I've already discussed, okay, last week. But I'm just saying it's September, okay? The er months are upon us. So here, here, uh, you, uh, if you're watching this before Labor Day, I hope you enjoy your weekend. If you're watching this after Labor Day, it's over. Summer is done. I don't care what the weather map or thing says about whatever the official day is. Summer's done. Okay. Corduroy. Flannel. Combined. Okay. I, excuse me, sorry, I have to get my hot water here. I'm about to eat breakfast of champions. Yes, yes, people. We got peanut butter. We got oatmeal making it rain. And then we got the hot water. Not too much. You don't want a soup. You don't want a soup. You want a meal, okay? You want oatmeal with peanut butter, okay? You got your protein, you got your fatty oils, which are essential, and you got your carbs. Yum, 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 yum. And if it was colder outside, I'd be eating this thing down with a nice mug of coffee, maybe a latte, but it's too hot. My classroom's is barely cool at all. So instead I have my blackberry citrus. Oh yeah. Don't worry, I'm not gonna eat this on camera. Okay. I'm going to pause, devour my scrumptious meal, come back, and we're gonna move on with um week four. Now that we're in September. Okay. Hold tight. All done. Yum 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 yum. Now I feel Fueled and refreshed. So let's do this. Let's get into this lecture. Okay. All right. So uh, we're going to be doing week four. Fun times. Let's go to lessons. We're going to be working out of the essay one. Because today, if you've been following the list of things we're doing, you would know that today I'm going to introduce essay one and I modified some of this stuff so it doesn't look exactly like it was. Uh, I'm going to talk about conducting research properly, okay, uh, properly for your paper, okay, and I'm going to go over punctuating quotes and that kind of good stuff, all right. The goal this week is to write essay one, which is, means you kind of have to move fast which is why I'm gonna post this uh, lecture probably before September. So that way you can get, always get a head start, okay? All right. So, uh, the PowerPoint I'm using today is right here. If you downloaded this PowerPoint, for some reason, prior to, to August 30th, then you're gonna to need to re-download it. I've changed it some, okay? so. Sorry, all oh, you go-getters. <clears throat> Here we go. Look, 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 don't look, don't look. Don't look until I've set it going. If I can get it going. <laughs> Where am I getting? Here we go. Ah, idiot. No. Pause for a moment. There we go. Okay. I'm not a boomer. Shut your mouths. Okay. 
unit one, the female perspective. That's what we've been covering is the female perspective in this unit, whether you realize that or not. Okay. Uh, I hope you realize it. Your paper is going to be based upon the stories that we read uh, in this unit. Okay. Um, so in those stories, just in case you get a recap, story of an hour. Uh, the uh, the adulterous woman. Uh, the hills that white elephants. And a sea change. Those are the four main stories that we read. Okay. All right. So here are some of the options. A feminist reading of the story of an hour by applying three quotes of Simone de Beauvoir to the story and discussing how they relate to the main character. A feminist reading of The Adulterous Woman. That is the exact, I'm sorry, the feminist reading of The Adulterous Woman. There you go. By applying three quotes of Simone de Beauvoir to the story and discussing how they relate to the main character. A feminist reading of Hills Like White Elephants by applying three quotes of Simone de Beauvoir to the story and discussing how they relate to the main character. Are you catching a pattern here? An existential reading of three of the stories we have read in this unit. The story of an hour, the adulterous woman, hills like white elephants, and or the sea change. You could apply the waiter metaphor to three stories and discuss how three characters were trying to pretend to be something they weren't. And finally, they broke out of those roles. Okay. Uh, fifth option, a compare and contrast reading of the story of an hour and the adulterous woman. Okay. Or your own topic that analyzes one story extensively or three stories within their own paragraphs. Okay. Uh, you can analyze these stories, but you need to. Um, so for five and six, okay, if you're not going to be applying a Simone de Beauvoir quote to your analysis, okay. And for five and six, you're going to need to use additional outside resources for your essay, okay? Because as you'll see, if you if you if you pick the uh, if you pick one through four, you can use the uh, let's see here one through three. You can use Simone de Beauvoir, okay? If you pick four through six, you need to have at least three outside sources, all right? Um, because for every essay, for every paragraph that you're writing, I want you to use a outside source. Uh, one through three, the outside source are the Simone de Beauvoir quotes that I've given you. Numbers four, five, and six, uh, you can pull, which I'm gonna go over research in this essay, okay? You can pull uh, three sources from something else, okay, from uh, the internet and the online line library okay which you still have to do at least one time for one two or three how, how confusing can i make this right just so you know the differences between essay one and essay two focus in essay one i'm going to focus mostly on mla formatting and the use of quotes which is why i need you to have outside sources also to apply to uh the uh the stories all right I'm doing a lot of formatting and a lot of grammar in terms of are you punctuating quotes correctly? And as a two, in terms of grading, I'll be focused on, on MLA formatting, punctuation quotes, and essay structure, introductions, body paragraphs, conclusions, all that kind of stuff, okay? Essay one, though, is really about MLA formatting and the use of quotes, okay? Requirements for your essay. Um, it needs to be at least three full pages. Full, not two and a half or two and three quarters, but three full, which to be safe, it should be at least four pages, even if the fourth page only has one line on it. Have a works cited page, including the stories you used in one secondary source. So if you uh, if you are writing about, if you're writing a, a Simone de Beauvoir essay, Okay, an essay with her. Okay, she can be your secondary source. I'm saying that right now. You have your stories, and then you have the quotes that I gave you. Okay, pros and cons to this. 
to one. It keeps you restricted to just focusing on applying those Simone de Beauvoir quotes to your essay, okay? Uh, and then also you don't get the practice of doing additional research, which could be pros and cons. Some could say, well, I don't want the additional stress of doing research on this paper. So I'm just gonna use the Simone de, de Beauvoir quotes as my secondary source. Um, if you, um, but some of you might be like, I don't wanna be restricted to just writing about using Simone. So instead I want to practice doing some research and write my own interpretation of these stories based upon my own research, okay? Either one is fine. You can use the Simone de Beauvoir quotes as your secondary source, or you can, you, you can conduct research, which I'm gonna show you how to do, okay? There needs to be proper MLA formatting on your essay. We've gone over several times, I've talked about it. And I'm, I'm gonna go over again next week. Uh, and then parenthetical citations where you quote the, the source material and you quote your additional secondary source, which is either Simone de Beauvoir or your own research, okay? And you get integrate quotes, that's, that's obvious. This week you are writing your rough draft, okay? So uh, you're picking the stories that you wanna write about. Um, you can write about one story and have three body paragraphs about that story, or you can write about multiple stories, however you wanna do it, okay? Um, because, you know, I'm grading, again, I'm grading your MLA formatting. Is your essay set up correctly? Are you integrating quotes? And uh, are you uh, citing properly? It's all, it's all mechanical. So like if you, if you write the whole essay, three and a half pages, three pages on just one story, cool. If you write a one body paragraph per a different story, cool. Whatever is easier for you, okay? Um, some people find it easier to write about just one story. All they gotta do is, is, is know one story real well, okay? But some people find that difficult also though, because like you have to analyze, you're not summarizing, you're, you're, you're analyzing. And so some people find it hard to come up with three different ideas about the same story. Therefore, some people would rather write about three different stories because that, that's easy because it's like one paragraph per story. The story gives you plenty to, to, to think about. So you have plenty to write in that one paragraph and then you move on to the next story, and the next story, okay? So you decide. But regardless though, you have a week to write this rough draft. September 12th through 18th, you are editing said rough draft um, after watching my editing lecture, okay? And then you will submit it. And then me, on starting September 19th, I'll begin grading those essays. Could take up to two weeks. <clears throat> now, I'm gonna try to finish them in a week because y'all, this class, only have one L 1102 class of like 25 kids, students possibly adults, 25, 25 students in this class. And then <clears throat> one week later is when my 1102 classes submit their essays. And there are like 80 of those kids, students, possible adults. So I would like to get go ahead and get your essays completed all the week of September 19th. So that way I'm ready to then grade 1101. Okay, which will take two weeks to grade theirs, okay? Regardless, I'm starting on yours first. So I'm gonna work through all the 1102 essays first, and then I'll get to 1101, okay? So you need to try to submit your paper by September 19th. You can submit it later and it might be fine as long as it's in the grade, as long as it's in the Dropbox by the time I get to it, which means that it could take me five days to grade them all. So even if you submit it by, the, by Friday, then you're good. But if like half the class doesn't submit on time, then I'm gonna get through that first half pretty quickly. So if I, if I grade 10 essays and that's all that's been turned in, then all those other essays are gonna be, that haven't been turned in yet will be zeros. And then the high, and then once they are turned in, the highest grade you'll get is a 70. So you don't want that, okay? You wanna make sure that you turn in your essay on time. You don't wanna chance it, okay? Okay. Now we're gonna talk about grammar and research, but we're actually, actually, I should say, we're gonna talk about research and grammar, because the research comes first.
in this presentation. Using research in writing. There's two types of research you can use. One is supportive research. This is research that directly supports your analysis because the author of the research shares your perspective. Okay. So this is for people who are, those of you who don't want to use a Simone de Beauvoir quotes, you don't want to talk about Simone, you want to provide your own interpretations of these stories, which is awesome, okay, you'll be doing research. Regardless, everyone's going to be doing research for SA2 and SA3, okay? So you can, you can start practicing now, or you can wait till SA2. So an example of supportive research is, let's say you're writing about the yellow wallpaper. It's a story about a woman who goes crazy. She was insane. Okay. Your topic is about how the main character in the yellow wallpaper becomes insane because of the setting. That's what you want to discuss. You want, you know, your essay, you're like, uh, she goes crazy only because she's put in a crazy room, a room that drives her crazy. Okay. Well, then you could find research that supports that. Like this, this, this uh, article by Carol Davison. It's called The uh, Haunted House, Haunted Heroine female gothic closets in the yellow wallpaper. This piece of research is supports your interpretation of the yellow wallpaper because this document is about the yellow wallpaper and it's about how the main character goes crazy because of the setting, okay? And that's exactly what you want set out to write about. So this this source completely supports your idea. That's supportive research, okay? And you can pull this quote out. You could say, you could use in your paper, the immediate and most disturbing implication is that she is infantilized in this former nursery. She meaning the main character, okay? All right, so there's that. Supportive research. Piece of research on the exact story you're writing on the same idea that you have, okay? But that's lucky. It's hard to find supportive research. Can't always do that, all right? A lot of times we have original ideas that, you know, that we want to make. I always did. I hated just summarizing other people's ideas. I wanted to, to formulate my own ideas always. So I utilize topical research. Research that indirectly supports your analysis. By applying the research to your topic, you're applying it to your idea. So again, let's say we're using the same topic of how the main character in the yellow wallpaper becomes insane because of the setting, okay? I could use this piece of research, social isolation and mental health, a conceptual and methodo methodological review. This article is not about the yellow wallpaper, but it's on the topic of mental health and isolation. I can take that idea and say, the woman in the yellow wallpaper goes, becomes insane because when people are isolated, you know, Jingyi Wang discusses how when people are isolated, their mental health suffers from it. And I can use this quote. Previous studies have ident identified an association between loneliness and depression, such as suicidal behavior, personality disorders, and psychosis, which are all things that this woman in the, in the yellow wallpaper feels. So this article is not about the yellow wallpaper, but I take what it says on the, on the topic of mental health and isolation, and I apply that to my interpretation, okay? So that's topical research, which to me is better. It's smarter, it's harder, okay? I'm more impressed by topical research than I am about uh, supportive research, personally. All right, so how do you go about conducting your research? We don't live in an age where we're going to the library anymore, and this is a digital classroom. Um, if we were on campus, I would take you to the library, but we're not. So we gotta go to the virtual library. What? I don't know why that's trippy anymore. I mean, this is just common stuff, so whatever. So here we go. 
You need to use one outside resource. Oh, I, I gotta fix that. Resources for your essay. Okay. One. You're using one. You can use Biblio Guides and Galileo for your research if you want to. Okay, which is on on um, our Blackboard. Or you can go to the library online. Go to Galileo. Okay. Uh, okay. When you go to Galileo, select Library Research Database, EBSCO. Type in the title of the story. All right, in this case, I'm doing where are you going, where have you been, as an example. Okay. This is if you're doing if you if you if you're doing supportive research. Click Advanced Search, and then if you type in like what you want to discuss, theme, symbolism, meaning, feminism, existentialism, whatever. All right, and then it'll give you a, a bunch of articles to choose from. And you can read through them and you can pick one that sounds like, you know, what you really want to do. Okay. Let's say I was doing a research on, on the story of an hour and I find this one that's about focusing on her depiction of technology and themes of postmodernism and feminism. Okay. I want to do a feminist interpretation of the story of an hour. Boom. This source is good. Yeah, it's about the story and it's about uh, my uh, focus. So this is some good supportive research. It supports my analysis of the story. So then I would read it. Okay. All right. Now what you want to do is you want to, when you, when you, if you pull up a piece of research on Galileo, you want to click on this button and it will present to you the citation information. And we do MLA. You would need to then copy this and paste it in your Word document. I'm going to go over works cited pages uh, next week, but you still like to go ahead and try to keep track of your of your sources uh, because it'll make it easier to write. Okay. Then you read the article and you find a quote you want to use. I read the article. I might find this quote. She presents an allegory which applies existential uh, initiation rights to the biblical seduction myth to represent every man's transition from the illusion of free will to the realization of externally determined fate. Whatever that means, right? Okay, but let's say I want to use that quote in my paper. That's the quote. All right, I'm going to put that in my paper. That's my one outside resource. Okay. Okay. But we've got to buy the respectable sources. All right. So you can also conduct, if you don't want to do Galileo, which can be a little bit limited, okay, it can be very limiting, you can also conduct internet-based research on Google. If your research comes, look at that finger, that's crazy. If your research comes from any of these types of sources, news sources with the Associated Press, the New York Times, Vulture, The Atlantic, Slate, The Guardian, The Economist, Forbes, The Washington Times. Oh, that's my shirt. The Wash. No, this is The Washington Post. Democracy dies in darkness. Ah! I love this shirt. I, I think I've said this before. I don't care about the, the Washington Post itself. I just think this is a great saying. Democracy dies in darkness. That's right. Literacy. Anyways. Psychology Today, New York Magazine, anything.org or dark, dot gov or dot edu. These are all good sources that you can pull stuff from, especially if you want to do topical research. Okay, don't use things like Wikipedia, dictionary.com, online encyclopedias, dot com organizations, CNN News, Foxy News. Okay, and still. Like I just said, Google will be more useful when conducting topical research. All right. It's hard to, um, this way, you can't always find the right article on Galileo about the story that you want to read, especially like the adulterous woman. It's a very random story that a lot of, a lot of people don't write about. And they should because it's awesome. But um, 
So you won't find a lot of research on some of these stories. So instead, like as in supportive research, so you should do more of a topical focus of you uh, taking some ideas and applying them to the short stories, okay? And Google could be a good use. Now though, I mentioned Wikipedia. Wikipedia's right there, Wikipedia, do not use Wikipedia. But here's my exception with Wikipedia. While you should never quote Wikipedia, you can cite the sources from the, from the bibliography of a Wikipedia page. What does that mean? Let me show you. Example, let's say you wanna write about microaggressions in the sea change. Mm -hmm. Phil, Phil, not acting too loving Phil with all your little microaggressions. So let's say you go to Wikipedia and you read the following quote about microaggressions. Jeez, let me get my magnifying glass here, okay? Um, on their microaggression page on Wikipedia, it says, in focus groups, individuals identifying as bisexual report such microaggressions as others denying or dismissing their self-narratives or identity claims. Being unable to understand or accept bisexuality as a possibility, pressuring them to change their bisexual identity expecting them to be sexually promiscuous and questioning their ability to maintain monogamous relationships. You get that? So let's say you, you read that quote and you're like, dang, that is some grade A uh, topical quotation right there. I want to use that in my paper. But you can't quote Wikipedia, okay? No, you don't quote Wikipedia. But what you can do though is notice this. That, that is a citation, okay? Citation. Click that. You like this, let's say you like this quote, this line, click it, click, okay? And it will send you to the work cited page on Wikipedia. This is the very bottom of Wikipedia. And it will highlight in blue, not, not yellow, that was me, the original source, okay? This quote that I liked, all right, is a summary of this research done by 34 W. Hockwimborg A. Bostwick, which apparently he wrote in just a little hint, bisexual specific microaggressions and their connection to epistemic injustices, okay? You can take that, that is your source. You're not citing Wikipedia, you're citing the original source, okay? And then you can write this quote in your, in your, in, in your um, paper. Like many people, Phil, the character from Sea Change, elicits microaggressions toward his girlfriend because he is refusing, quote, to understand or accept bisexuality as a possibility. Pitch mark, and then I add Bostwick's name because Bostwick is here, who originally said it, which was then put on Wikipedia. Okay, so so you're using but not using Wikipedia. You're using Wikipedia, but you're not citing Wikipedia. That's a no-no. Okay, even though everyone uses Wikipedia for their research. Okay, I can't tell you part how many times like I'm on Facebook arguing with some sort of stupid racist. Okay about stuff and then they will throw out all these uh these documents these art these uh articles and i'm like you got those articles from the wikipedia works cited page okay bro so anyways but you can do it in your uh essay okay you don't cite wikipedia but you do cite the source where that information came from okay which is important because if you go to Wikipedia and and you find an article with no sources, okay, you find a page you find a page that just has quote you know you know someone wrote it but they have no sources supporting it, then stay away, okay? It's unsupported. But if you go to a page and there's tons and tons of of citations, well then it's pretty relevant, okay? It's pretty re I mean I'm sorry not relevant reliable, okay? But cite the, the site this okay 
we need to go over grammar with titles and quotation marks. Um, after grading the first couple of assignments, I see that some people did not pay attention when I went over it earlier, okay? So, got to do it. I'm going to go over it kind of quickly because I've already gone over once before. If you have not received points off for grammar um, or improperly, yeah, you know, doing uh, writing quotation marks correctly and punctuation on your in your homework, then you should be good. <laughs> Excuse me, but still, you should watch it. Here we go. Titles of short stories, poems, articles, songs, or episodes of TV shows go inside of quotation marks. So most of the stuff you're writing about this week, the short stories and the articles that you're quoting from, should be in quotation marks. Story of an hour, the road not taken, understanding Chopin, Bertha, great Grateful Dead song, the one with all the parties. That's a that's the title of a Friends episode. Okay, titles of books, films, magazines, newspapers, TV shows, music albums. These are in italics. Mindhunter, Star Wars, Rolling Stone, The New York Times, American Beauty, The Outsider. American Beauty, the album, not the creepy film with the creepy guy doing the creepy stuff in it, okay? But the Grateful Dead album, American Beauty, which was named before the creepy film came out with the bag. Anyways, all right, punctuating quotation marks. I must go inside of quotation marks. So instead of writing in quote, the story of an hour, quotation mark, comma, the protagonist dies of a heart attack, it should be in story of an hour, comma, quotation mark, the protagonist dies of a heart attack. You will be marked off points for making this, these errors. Okay, and then at the very end, if you end the sentence with a quotation, that period needs to go inside of the quotation mark. Example two is incorrect. This one is correct. I couldn't believe that she died from a heart condition. Okay. Period, and then quotation mark. Don't mess that up. Don't do it. Don't do it. In text citations. Okay. So pretty much this. If you're, if you're quoting someone or paraphrasing someone, you have to mention their name in either the sentence directly or at the end of the sentence in parentheses. Okay? So if you're quoting William Wordsworth, you can either say his name in the sentence or have his name at the very end of the sentence in parentheses. So for example one, Wordsworth stated that romantic poetry was marked by a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings, 263 period. Or you can say romantic poetry is characterized by the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings, parentheses, Wordsworth, 263, uh, parentheses, period. The 263 is a page number. If you know what page this information came on with your source, use the page number. If, if it's an internet website, if it's, if it's a PDF with no page numbers, don't include any numbers. The only number inside of, of a parenthetical citation should be a page number. Do not put a date. People are, for whatever reason, I have students who are going to websites and looking up, I guess, like APA formatting, other types of formatting that's not MLA, and they're seeing, oh, in APA, you're supposed to put the, the year in which this quote was written. I need to do that also. You don't. You do not. The only numbers that go inside of a parenthetical citation for MLA is, is page number. If there are no page numbers, then you just have the kid, the person's last name. That's it, okay? The person's last name of whoever you're quoting has to either be in this sentence, like this first example, or it needs to be in the parentheses, like the second example, okay? Okay. Make sure you are writing your essay always in third person. He did this, she did this, okay? Stories about this. Don't ever write, I think this. Oh my God, this is my opinion. 
I know it's your opinion because you're writing the paper. You don't have to tell me it's yours. Just write the paper. Okay. Third person. Don't begin with kind of statements like, in my opinion. Always write in present tense. Unless when talking about something that happened in the past within the story. Okay. Neen sees the guard. She hopes to get his attention. When I go, this, let's say this was the story where this, that story was, and I open the story and I read it, it's happening right now. Janine sees the guard, she hopes to get his attention. It's not when Janine saw the guard, she hoped to get his attention in the past. No, because it's, hap it's happening right here in the, in the story right now. I see it, okay? Janine sees the guard, she hopes to get his attention. It's not she saw the guard, she tried to get his attention, okay? Because it's happening right now in the story. All right. Huh. Integrating quotes. Okay. Drop quotes are quotes that stand by themselves as complete sentences. These are incorrect. You cannot just have a quote. You can't have a period and then have a quotation mark, quote, and then period. It's incorrect. Okay. Always use a signal phrase to lead into a quote. A quote cannot be a sentence all, all its own. You have to have some of your own words inside uh, of a sentence with a quote, okay? No quotation, again, should stand by itself as a separate sentence. There are two bad examples. There are many examples of self-analysis in Plato's philosophy, period, quotation mark. The unexamined life is not worth living, quotation mark, period. This is a drop quote. We have a period and then a quotation mark. And a complete sentence. And then we have quotation marks, parentheses, period. Wrong! That's wrong. Okay, same thing here. Wrong. This is integrated. Plato thinks people should analyze their own lives because, quote, the unexamined life is not worth living quote, period. That's integrated, okay? If you can delete a quote and there's no proof it was ever there, that's incorrect. I could delete this quote right here and we still have, there are many examples of self-analysis in Plato's philosophy, okay? But if I delete this quote right here, the examined life is not, is not worth living, we would have an incomplete sentence because after because, there's nothing there. And as there, when, and, but there should be, because when you have a because, you should have something that follows. So that's, that right there is evidence that this is integrated correctly. You can integrate quotes all these different ways. Introduce quote, the, always introduce quotes with a signal phrase before they appear in your paper. So the author comments, the author analyzes, the author asks, the author reports, the author says, the author thinks, the author maintains, the author defends, whatever. Got to have a signal phrase leading into a quote. And I need to hurry up. Class is almost over. All right. Uh, I mean, playing period is almost over. All right. You can read through all that yourself. Rough draft. The 12th. Okay. I'll start looking through those or some number on 12th, but probably not the 12th. Maybe the 12th though. Okay. So. Uh, try to get it done by next by the end of the, the weekend. It doesn't really need to be turned in on midnight, Sunday at midnight, because I won't be great. I won't be looking at them. The earliest I could be looking at them would be seven, really seven a.m. on Monday. Okay. So if you need to pull all nighter, welcome to college, people. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, just reach out to me. I I went like quite, kind of fast. I mean, for forty minutes. Okay. So there's a lot to cover. I've posted everything on eClass already. So if you if you uh, need to um, look it up, do it. And then after you've watched this lecture, if you have any questions, let me know, and I'll I'll be around to help you. Okay. 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 Take it easy, people. Have fun. Enjoy. Chill. I don't know what that was.